Welcome back to Ace Combat. I was gonna open it up with me combat, but I didn't think it, the joke would land. I'm Drunken Dan. It's also my birthday today. Woo! Happy birthday! So anyway, the world sucks. <clears throat> well, I was gonna say actually, it's been a kind of roller coaster week. Let's let's do like kind of a good news, bad news kind of thing. All so right. Good news. It's, it's your birthday. Woo! Yay! Bad news. There was a mass shooting on the Fourth of July. Very American of them. There was yeah. two actually. Good. Yeah. By a wealthy rapper, no less. Yes. Anyway, it's fine. You don't need to, you don't need to do anything. We just, we just keep standing up here and looking at this and saying, "Yeah, I wish there was something we could do." Thoughts like, and prayers. Anything. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts, thoughts and prayers. We'll pray away the bullets. That'll do it. It just, I don't know. I always think back to when Obama was president, and he just got up one day and he was like, "Yeah, there's been another school shooting. What do you want me to say?" Like, we can't, we keep coming back here. What am I supposed to do? Uh, here, here's. I mean, there's a gun control idea. Oh no, we can't. NRA. Okay. No, not at all. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts. Because T H O T S. Because and prayers. If, because God forbid you do anything to impede the Second Amendment that doesn't even say you have the right to bear arms to begin with. Although I guess we won't mention that part, right? No, no. I mean, it's, it would it's just like, be, it's, you, the second event screamers are the same people that also scream about the Bible, but also haven't read the Bible. It just, it just feels like I mean, I'm not even saying you know get rid of all the guns. I'm thinking it, but I'm not saying it. But like, surely just make it so it's like limited to a nine millimeter. Oh, hey, Sobo. But yeah, make it so it's like limited to like a nine millimeter for normal households, and then if you like. If you're like in the middle of buttfuck nowhere and you need to like deal with you know like animals or whatever, you can apply to have a license for a shotgun. No, you need to have that. You need to have a uh, AK-47. That way you can fight the bears. Those bears have rocket launchers. All you need is a good baseball bat to beat those lawbreakers. Mm. It looks like you could use some iron in your diet. Oh yeah, what's your period? The only dough you'll be getting tonight, Lawbreaker. But yeah, another mass shooting. It's like, what can you do? Literally nothing. We nothing any of us could have done. Even when all, even when that ma if when he purchased all of those guns and there were all these red flags that were apparently raised in the system, it was just completely unavoidable. And legal which mass shooting are we talking about this time? There was two uh, of them in the fourth. Ex exactly. And surely that therein lies the therein lies the ultimate tragedy. Is well, how many counts is a mass shooting? Because it's like it's mass shooting where four people died, and I was like, I mean, that's just your average day in Detroit. Yeah, but it's in Chicago. That's only that's like only your every holiday weekend in Chicago. Yeah, I mean a lot of people. That's happening right now in Chicago. There's probably somebody getting shot in Chicago as we speak. <laughs> just one? Because that's just that's just how well. Well, I mean at, at this very second, I'm sure by the end of recording there'll be at least ten because you know it's just how they say hello over there. <laughs> but anyway, that was so that was the bat. That was the second round. That was our first round of good news, bad news. So we guess back to good news. Boris Johnson is gone. Woo! Or going. Yay! Rotten hell! I wish, he, I wish he was actually being fired out of a cannon. Into the sun! I've, I've said no. I've said before, my ideal strategy would be to take him and everyone else I don't like and put them in a rowboat in the North Sea and push them off and say basically, I don't care where you go, but if you come back here, you will be shot. <laughs> I think exile should be a viable punishment again. I mean, I don't even disagree, so... Imagine, imagine that, you know, Trump's a problem. Not anymore. Not if you say, well, you just literally can't come on our soil anymore. Ever again. Bye. You've been uncitizened. Step, if you step off that boat onto this, onto our land, you will die. That's not, then it, we're blameless because you were told. We told you. At that point, it would be suicide. It would be suicide. It's like no one could convict you if a man commits suicide. But, uh... but yeah, it's a long, been a long time coming, and uh, I don't know if even know if any of you know the story as to why it's kicked off. Uh, no. Well, all right. So basically, all the shit he's done, I'm curious. All right. So basically, back in February, he appointed a man called Chris Pincher, who's an MP, to be Chief Deputy Whip. You're an MP. Which is a pretty, you know, pretty powerful position in the government. Uh. So anyway, uh, about like sort of the end of June, I think it was like literally June 29th, uh, 
Mr. Pinch had decided to go to a club and he got a little bit tipsy. You know, he did what most people do when they're a bit tipsy. He slurred his words, he made an ass of himself. Oh, and then he groped two men inappropriately. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah, 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 really fun. So, there was a massive outcry. There was, you know, a bit of a scandal about that. It's all well and good. Boris said, oh, this is completely unacceptable. I don't know why this has happened. And then it turned out that a similar complaint had been made against Mr. Pincher before. Pretty uh, detailed account of him sexually assaulting uh, another member of staff uh, back in 2019. Hmm. So the story then went, f and so the story then became, well, hang on, did Boris know about this uh, original accusation when he avoided him? And Boris, uh, the number 10, insisted, no, 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 I had no idea. And then the Lord came out and said, yes, you did, because I told you directly. And he said, well, I didn't know any, I didn't know the severity of it. And the Lord was like, yes, you did, because I told you. Well, I didn't know it was specifically that. Yes, you did, because I told you. And um, for one reason or another, I have suspicions as to why uh, numer like two major cabinet ministers resigned. And then that led to a wave of resignations. I think we're up to like 55 people resigned in a day. Or like a third. 33 hour period, there's about 55 resignations from the government. I didn't know that, you told me. You can't prove that. I have a picture right here of us talking about it, which is subtitled, to show that I'm talking about just that. It's basically that, because when he did Prime Minister's Question Time yesterday, the leader of the opposition flat out quoted to him his exact words regarding the man, no. which is that Boris, Boris described him as a bit handsy and pitcher by name, pitcher by nature. And it's like, no. fuck it. And yeah, so it was like 55 MPs resigning, which is literally unprecedented. Like, it's never been anywhere near that high, especially not in a 33-hour period. And uh, yeah, he insisted last night that he was going to stay. He was refusing to stand down. Like, you'd have to get your hands bloody to drag him out. And then this morning he said, all right, I'm going. Oh, so like, so similar to Trump. Basically. Uh, in, in the sense that I imagine literally everyone was standing, was going into that office and saying, will you just fucking go, please? No. Like, this has gone, this went beyond the joke like four controversies ago. It's like, he's the, oh, he's the first ever Prime Minister to be fined by the Metropolitan Police while in office. It's ridiculous. Like, that's, like that's back in the olden days, that would have been a complete... <laughs> A complete like uh, removal from politics, and now that's just the norm, I guess. But yeah, he's going. He's not specific. He's not specified exactly where because it relies on when they elect a new leader of the Conservative Party, who will then become uh, the next Prime Minister. And there always has to be a Prime Minister, so he will be a caretaker for now. But he is going to go. Hooray! Now, hopefully, he can just die. Fun fact! I'm going to run through a list of things that Boris Johnson has done. Uh, back in the 90s, when he was a humble journalist for a trashy rag newspaper owned by Rupert Murdoch, uh, a friend of his, whose name, whose first name I forget, but his last name is Guppy, uh, who was a massive fraudster, I don't mean a massive fraudster, decided that he didn't like that one journalist was looking into him, so he contacted his great friend Boris Johnson and he asked him in no uncertain terms, can you give me this man's address so I could go and, kick the so I could go and kill him? And do you know why Boris didn't give him the address? Why? Because he was so shit as a journalist, he couldn't find it. <laughs> so so no, he just killed. He just went and killed him himself. No, he didn't, because he got arrested basically. But it's like compl still complicit in plotting, which illegal. What? Uh, Who would have uh, thought that, that would be illegal? <laughs> Uh, there was this time when he was mayor of London, he introduced those stupid fucking buses that uh, caused a thousand percent increase in the number of road accidents in the greater city of London area. A thousand percent. It's like, how do you actually have that many sh uh, And then just every night, and then just basically check any kind of news for any given week since 2019, and you'll have seen everything Boris Johnson has done wrong, including potentially try and break the law so that he can undo the deal he himself made for Brexit. Fucking clown. <laughs> My one regret is he didn't suffer. My one regret is I wish he'd have stuck on. I really wish he'd have stayed in because I was hoping and praying that he would have to be physically dragged out and he'd resist arrest and they, uh, you know, the police would not be gentle. I mean, that's what I was kind of hoping with Trump, but, you know, he actually did finally walk out. Yeah, only after he 
only after he started an insurrection. Yes. It was quite funny though. Because well, you know, in America, was... you can just do that, and it's okay. When he was giving his resignation speech, uh, because you can't actually, because you know, regular peasants can't go on Downing Street because there's massive gates. But at the gates, there were massive crowds of people just booing him. When he left PMQs yesterday, uh, the entire House of Commons, all the MPs, just started chanting "Bye bye, Boris." Oh, it was beautiful. Nice to know that he Almost. loved. Yeah. So anyway, as for bad news, Kazuki Takahashi died. Yeah, I saw that when I got up this morning. Actually, uh, pretty heartbreaking. Yeah, there's no jokes here. Uh, no, 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 I'm not going to joke about this. Because <laughs> I was thinking about it, and, and aside from, well, it was kind of, is the, de the circumstances of his death were really up in the air and a bit odd, but that's also, I mean, sort of first breaking news, so who's yeah. still, we'll see. If I was to guess, because of the, uh, I mean, this will be way out of date when this comes out, is since he was snorkeling, he could have had like a heart attack or something while snorkeling. Yeah, or just any number of things can happen, like people underestimate the ocean, drowning happens surprisingly yeah. quick. But drowning's also terrible to go. People, yeah. are, people are saying, oh, his body had like wounds inflicted by marine life, but... I mean, if you've been dead for a bit and you're sitting there, that's just gonna happen. Yeah, like... That, that'd sound uh, morbid, but yeah, that's just gonna happen. Aquatic life will feed on carrion, yeah. So, but yeah, I was, it's kind of been one of those things where the more I thought about it, it's like this might actually be the creator kind of thing, kind of death, sled death that's affect, that's kind of affecting me most. Because it's like, I'm not saying, well, it's not sad when people like the Eurodot, of course it is. And, you know, I feel really, and, you know, you feel for people who were really want, who really cared about Berserk as a story and wanted to see the ending. But at least it felt like Miura died, like, you know, it was a health condition. Like, it was something that nothing, no, it, it wasn't avoidable. He was pretty old, and it... Because, like, 60 is not that old. Yeah, uh, but as I said, it's just the sheer... It seems to have just been an accident. Could have been easily avoided, and that makes it worse. And I was kind of thinking on it. And I kind of realized that Takahashi is probably, like... what <laughs> The most influential mangaka that nobody would have really considered influential until kind of today. She's right. I see yeah. Well, because I was even thinking about it in the sense of obviously the Yu-Gi-Oh manga, you know, is pretty, is its own thing, it's separate from a lot of other things about related to the franchise. But like the game is, you know, big enough that it's, you know, people have played it. I've played it. I've made a lot of friends through that game. You know, Hell, even, a lot even of... though like I wasn't as huge into it, I I played Yu-Gi-Oh back in the day. But my point is that there are people who have, you know, gone to, who have like made really strong connections through the game, and that's kind of something that's almost unique to um, this exact like Takahashi and Yu-Gi-Oh in general. Because, like I said, Berserk obviously uh, hugely influential. I'm not trying to diminish Miura's death at all, but it's like in comparison, I can see why um, Miura's death has didn't hit me as hard as Takahashi's did. Just because, yeah, I have a greater connection affinity with you. Oh, I mean, okay, hell, you know, I just realized I cannot take the um, the uh, Mihai ship into the tunnel run because the wings are actually too big. Yeah, uh, fair. So I, I, I'm gonna have to redo this mission with a different jet. <laughs> Do the Raptor then? No wings. Yeah. Or tiny, tiny babby wings. But um, yeah, and it's just kind of. I'm thought, kind of, as I said, you don't appreciate how actually influential Yu-Gi-Oh as a franchise was until you really. It still, about... it still is, honestly. Well, yeah, I was thinking it. It was a lot of people. Like, obviously, you had Pokemon, but for a lot of other um, Digimon and things like that. But for a lot of people, Yu-Gi-Oh was the gateway anime. You know, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh is that thing that a lot of people grew up with. We were just into it a little bit before Yu-Gi-Oh was all, but like for a lot of people, it was, and it was big with like met boys, girls. It was, it was huge, like. Mm. It's it's a massive franchise, and hell, the, the, he himself also loved it enough to where he owned like a giant collection of merchandise from his own shit. So yeah, I even saw like Eric Stewart, who's the Jap he's the English VA of um, Kaibo, was tweeting about it. He was reminiscing because he said because he'd obviously spoken to him a couple of times. I think the Japanese VA of Kaibo uh, posted a picture of. His hand holding blue eyes, which I thought was quite nice. It was just, yeah. As I said, it kind of hit me pretty hard. It, honestly, it's kind of, it's kind of soured, the, soured what should be be like beautiful victory over Bor over the, the hateful Boris. Because I'm like, yeah, but at what cost now? Ugh. 
yeah, that's been kind of the ups and downs of this week for me. Yeah. Oh yeah, also it was kind of funny, it was like, uh, right after we recorded last week, uh, they sh put out the, uh, and we were making fun of, Ro and I was making fun of Rise pretty hard, they put out the trailer for the Rise movie, um, which I decided to watch the trailer, and I like how, like, the first thing I see is a hippo who looks like a racist caricature of an Indian man. Yeah, that tracks. And I'm just like, right. I'm just like, what the fuck? All right, Sabo, say happy birthday. Oh yeah, it's my birthday today. Oh no, he died. Sabo's dead. Oh, he has muted himself. Actually, oh, it's not even me being shit. Oh, that's well. Funny when that happens. Jeez. Yeah. Now there's a chance he'll be here to listen to us being mean to him. Right. But um, yeah. Oh, also in the thing. They, they have another Casey Jones who is now a guy, which makes the uh, Casey Jones that I was like, is just Karai, but called Casey Jones and, and like, hockey even funnier and even stupider. It kind of mm. fits more into my, my, my quip about the, uh, the series being part of the era of being qu qu a hashtag different, but not really. Hmm. It's like the same era as like you get the get the uh, the second sequel Star Wars movie and all that other shit. Uh, oh, so apparently four four is terrible. I have not heard anything about it, so I just assume nobody's watching it. I've heard a couple things, but mainly it's from like last week. And uh, and I'm not going to say them because they do seem well, they're unsubstantiated. But yeah, it does sound pretty. It does sound pretty terrible. I mean, and, it's uh, fucking I'm Jane Thor, so. Yeah, I'm glad I wasn't looking forward to it. I'll say that much. I did see there was some article about the She-Hulk show that kind of bothered me, saying about how it's the antithesis to hero stuff and how she, oh she doesn't want to be uh, have these powers. That's like that's literally the fundamental misunderstanding of the character. You halfwits. Yeah. She loves the power. She loves being an eight foot, eight nine foot tall Amazonian. Like, why would she want to be boring old Jennifer Walters when she could be She-Hulk? She, she, literally yeah. Had a point. Like, literally, that's the thing. Like, that's the problem with a lot of like modern She-Hulk is they don't understand She-Hulk. Hmm. Like, they, they, like, I, I don't understand their lack of understanding of She-Hulk. It's crazy. It, it just—it's nonsensical to me. Oh. <clears throat> So yeah, it's been kind of the major stories that have dominated stuff for the past couple of days, and yeah. I'm sure there's some other silly things. I'm sure there's some silly things we could go back to, but yeah, for now it's kind of a... Oh, oh, he's back. Hey, he's back. Yes. Sabo, say happy birthday. It's my birthday happy today. Birthday. Is it? Yes. Um... Oh, oh yeah! No. Hold on, hold on, while I pull up the uh, the Binky the Clown birthday. Song. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday! Just you play it him. through the microphone. <laughs> oh no, we might get copyright striked by Garfield. What were, were you were you expecting that reference? Yes. Uh, yes, actually. Yes. We literally just before you joined, we, uh, he was like, "Oh, it's my birthday," and I was like, "Hang on, I gotta go find the video." And then every time I was like going to find a different birthday video, he would just name drop it until eventually he birthday got me with the job of the hot one. Whoop do whoop do do. Because I was like yeah. Binky the Clown. Uh, I was like Binky the I was like Binky the Clown. Um, Common Rider, Germa Rats. I think there was one other one that I guessed, but I don't remember what it was. We are the Buddy Bears, we always get along. They don't have a birthday song, unfortunately. No, they, no, they don't. They just have the Buddy Bear song. <laughs> but, um... They always get along, guy. The other thing I was... Uh, I was uh, go ahead, sorry. They, they always get along except for pizza toppings. Yes. So they don't, then. That's how you beat the Buddy Bears. You ask them what that's they want on the pizza. That's, that's how you beat the Buddy Bears. What do you want on their pizza? <laughs> and they argue over pizza toppings. Um, 
But also, uh, the other thing we mentioned while you were AFK was uh, I did watch, because it, it popped out, like, they, they announced the release date, and then I think, like, yesterday they put out the trailer for the TMNT Rise movie, and uh, I like how the first thing I see is a racist caricature of a hippo, like, a hippo looking like a, um, like, if you were to, it, it, like, if you were to make um, Apu look like the way people think Apu looks like when they talk about him. So, like, make Black him, Thor. Like, like who? Like who? Hold on. Hold on. Said, oh, no. I'm gonna have to minimize the game to look at this. Maybe. We'll see when he finds it. Well, it sounded like he got out of his chair, so he might have physically gone to find it, which is going to be even harder for you to see. Yeah, exactly. I'm holding it up to the microphone. Why can't you see with your ears? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that power yet. I didn't unlock that tree. You've heard of heat vision? Well, here's ear vision. When I joke, isn't that literally what sonar is? I mean, yeah. Sort of. Sort of. It's more of the, hey, Sonar tells you there's something here. What is that something? I don't know. Use your eyes, idiot. Okay, I can't find it, but they did it. They did a uh, a what if where what if Miles Morales became Thor. Oh, that thing! Yes. Kinda. And he basically became the most racist caricature of what a bunch of woke white people think. <laughs> no, no, people he, like. how, he, how he speaks. He speaks like how a black character... In a white directed show speaks in 2000 late 90s. Oh hell no! Yes. Oh no! By Odin's fade <laughs> is is the one line that that really got people. <laughs> oh, this sounds almost as good as Cowabama. And the, and they were they, they were just defending it. They're like, what what is isn't that isn't that what the audience wants to see? But by the way, I want to point out as I'm talking about the hippo, no Rise fan has looked at that hippo and thought there was a problem. As soon as I saw it, I was like, "What the fuck is this?" But then oh, I see everybody. Everybody then, looked at Miles Thor and knew there was a problem. But then again, you know, they also watched a Team and T Rise and thought there wasn't a problem. And also, actually watching that trailer too reminded me of another issue that I, I had with Rise is how it's editing is so ADD where they refuse to sit on a shot for more than five seconds. Hate that. Um. Also, in the trailer, there's now a male Casey Jones making the Karai female Casey Jones even more pointless. Oh yeah, I guess if we took. Oh right, I forgot. In more bad news, uh, Netflix has decided. Netflix has decided they're going to do a Death Note live action series again. Apparently. Again, yeah, yeah, we didn't because they didn't look the first time. We, we see we made the same mistake. So, uh, so We've tried nothing way. yet. Nothing is working. Nobody even cares about Death Note anymore. The time to do this was like ten years ago. Yeah, back when Japan did it. Just. Just license those movies. It's not everything. Now no, nobody really, even really cares about that. Though. I was like, what's, oh, what, isn't that that potato chip meme thing from like 15 years ago? Yeah, that's, just what, that's what death. That's what Death Note is. Nobody thinks it's like a masterpiece of writing anymore because, well, there have been better shows. Also, in my yeah. even back in the day, I thought it was stupid. And it's not like it's not. I mean, like I, mean I thought it was. I thought it was potentially interesting, but I found it rather frightening. Let's see how many times I crashed during this tunnel run. Everybody not... missed the point of light and like, oh, he's like, it's like, no, he's he's really a good guy and he's gonna kill all them criminal scum. He's not evil at all. And I'm like, okay, that did you miss the, the part where he literally? He, did you miss the part where one guy's like, we should kill people for being lazy? And light's like, yeah, that's a good idea. Like they couldn't they couldn't have hit it hit it any more on the head than if they pulled a gear and zombie. I was like, you're a lot like Adolf Hitler. Oh, I don't know who this Hitler person is, but I like the cut of his jib. So anyways, uh, the Xeon are the good guys, right? Hmm. But, um... I mean, I mean, at, least, at least the Gundam, fan, the Gundam fandom isn't just like, no, Xeon are the good guys and Federation are the bad guys. There I mean, are ones that do way. that, but overall, no. I mean, I'm overall, not... yeah, but those are usually oh, those idiots. They're like, no, it's grey. To be fair, a lot of the time, they're just like, Their yeah, they're fashion. grey, but... God, sorry. To be though, fair... Though, though, though there, was the, there was the one time when the, the guy who... Voice, what's his name in Char's counterattack? Who was at the point of rookie 
VA was like, so Char's the bad guy and Amaro's the good guy, right? And Char's VA is like, no, it's much more complicated than that. And I was like, oh, Char's definitely a bad guy in this film. With him, with him wanting to, you know, exterminate all human life on Earth. I think, my, I think let's be honest, most of the time people people are like, yeah, sure, the Zeons are fascist, but, you know, they dress so snappily. <laughs> Careful, if you make me laugh too hard, I'll swing my, my, myself into a wall again. Sounds like a you problem. Okay, I'm out of the tunnel. Oh. Oh. Oh god, I crashed anyway. So I didn't even say anything, you can't blame me. Yeah, that was my fault. I basically George of the jungled it. Watch out for that for that bridge. Good old George of the Jungle. Felt super weird that Disney released like the George of the Jungle uh re film. Like based within like the same couple of years of doing Tarzan. I mean that's exactly why they did it. I mean, I just don't. I get, I get the idea of let's make two similar, of two uh, pretty identical movies for the sake of it. Especially when nobody gives a shit about Tarzan. I mean, yeah. nobody gives a shit about George of the Jungle either, other than the you fact take that, that back. Other, other than the fact that it was back when Brendan Fraser still had hope in his life. Oh, poor Brendan Fraser. I mean. He was pretty much destroyed by divorces and their stuff like that. She took the kids, oh, are you? I crashed again. <laughs> Fuck me. There are I, no, I'm not in the tunnel. That are like, man, what? Uh, man, I, why I, does he look? T why does he look so terrible now? Man, he got old, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's not age; it's life breaking his spirit. So yeah, hey, that's just age. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you could you could tell because uh, when when like things started to look up and he got into Doom Patrol, his he suddenly he suddenly looked like he had hope again. Then he realized, oh no, it's, it's like it's, it's like it's like how it's like how Stephen Stephen Amell aged ten years doing Arrow and then de-aged ten years after he was done. So he could go into a much more respectful production, WWE. Yeah. I mean, Wait. Hold on. I mean, I mean, I mean, at least he doesn't look like he hates his entire existence now. Yeah, it's not as if WWE has ever killed anyone. Or endanger the lives of its uh, of its stars. Oh wait! <sighs> I'm uh, making the, the fly up is a pain in the ass in this thing. Like the flying up through the elevator. No. Yeah, I'm... Fly up. Because I keep that's hitting... your weapon. Because really? I keep hitting but the fucking it, side. I mean, at, at least at least the Mel created the greatest wrestling move of all time: the Arrow season four. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Should have called it the Mirko Roostel. Never forget. Never forget how's your either. Yeah, how's your week been, Sabo? Uh, warm. Yay. It's been pretty hot. It has been pretty hot here, yes. Did you guys do anything on the 4th? Except, nah. you know, not shoot people? No, I didn't shoot people. We grilled some stuff. And we opted not to go to a 4th of July party because we didn't feel like associating with anybody that day. Understandable. Okay, so I got through that part, so now I'm flying upwards. Hooray. Let's see if I still crash. I have faith. You fucking not say fool. What... I'll not say what I have faith in. You fucking but... fool. But I have it. Well, whatever it was, you fucking fool. That's for me to know, and you to never know. Oh. Okay, I made it out. Shame. <laughs> well, we'll do, definitely do one of the DLC missions since I didn't die 40 billion times. I was hoping we could have been left here. We could have been stuck here for like two years to catch up to Super Robot Wars T. <laughs> that, would, that would be fucking funny. That would basically uh, the closest we've had to that was the fucking like final levels of Transformers, yeah. because I didn't know about the healing items because I was a dummy. God, if I have uh, the money for it for for next recording, I kind of feel like I should buy the fucking uh, Maverick DLC specifically to fuck with uh, the DLC man. Who? How much is? How much is it? Like twenty dollars? Twenty. 
I'll pay. I'll PayPal it to you as a birthday present. Okay. Because that's what I would fucking do is play the DLC with that shit. Because it'd be funny. I don't know why, but it feels fitting to be see flying in Tom Cruise's thing, fucking with that guy. You'll <laughs> show, show him for not believing in Xenu. <laughs> fucking uh, Scientology. Yeah, he does. He, he is weirdly like the one who seems to get a pass on the whole Scientology thing, doesn't he? Nowadays, people kind of forgot that he was in Scientology. Yeah. I also kind of forgot he's out of the whole, like, I'm in love with Katie Holmes thing. Yeah. <laughs> Despite it being a huge meme. Yeah, people just kind of forgot about it. I mean, Tom Cruise kind of just fell off the face of the earth for a while and kind of more recently came back. Now he's back in pog form. Yeah, now he's back. It's Top Gun, and people were like, oh, where's Top Gun? Yeah, yeah, hey, remember when movies used to be good back in the 80s? Hey, Mission Impossible's also never also uh, sort of come back. Remember, Mission Impossible is the reason why we had the $30 million mustache. By the way, I just gotta say, I think it's funny seeing all these different jets flying behind mine, and I'm fucking in the, the raptor in the fucking phoenix skin, so I just look ridiculous. <laughs> oh, they look ridiculous. They don't know a thing about style. Exactly. You call that a paint job, you fucking pleb? Refugees built the settlement for themselves at the base. Oh yeah, I forgot there's an ending cutscene. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, forgot the there's, space... a, there's technically a story in this game. For them again today. Allegedly. Allegedly. Thanks to the princess. I can't wait till we get to the billion, the, the billion relief plan. I, I love the DLC. This, this game has probably my favorite set of DLC shit of any game. Like I enjoy the new Vegas DLC, but I but uh this is this is much better because it has the best villain in the entire. It has my favorite Ace Combat villain. <laughs> I mean, here's base. It is basically just Metal Gear. It is. <laughs> it's like it's like if Solid Snake did his fucking ramble shit, but Snake didn't talk at all and would just shoot at him. Come on, I'm trying to do a monologue here! Stop shooting! Don't you want to hear about how terrible you are for killing- Oh god, you're still shooting! Hey, he hasn't sounded British in like 30 years. Yeah, but come on, do you think of him in any other way? Uh, well I think of him as a ghost arm, mostly. It's not a ghost arm. <laughs> and besides, it's more fun to do that voice than trying to do a shitty ocelot voice. Brother! Even though uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, I specifically just call it Grumpy Old Men 4. It is. Because it's literally just like, it feels like a, it feels like a, a far-fledged sequel to the Grumpy Old Men franchise. <laughs> the part when that finally hit me was specifically in after you fight him with the Metal Gears, and he's running from you, and, and like Snake's like falling out and like stumbling, and he turns around for a second to point and laugh at him. I mean, it's one of those things that does reach a certain point where, no matter how in shape you are, you are going to be an old-ass man, so it's pretty unreasonable for you to be doing things. So anyway, is Indiana Jones 5 coming out soon? -ish? <laughs> oh. Now, a friend of mine... We, I, a friend of, I was drinking! <laughs> you son of a bitch, that fucking choked me. Ah, uh, I know a stinker. Uh, a friend of mine was recently replay well, not actually replaying, rewatching someone play uh, Fate of Atlantis, that adventure game that they did. That basically should have been what Indiana Jones Four should have should have been. So he went down the rabbit hole of, uh, you know, thinking I'm about Indiana the credit, Jones. We're not done with this playthrough. And it did always make me laugh. In the yeah, granted, you know, it's all kind of fake bullshit. You know, Ark of the Covenant, all that jazz. But at least it's all like fake bullshit with some amount of gravitas, you know? Whereas the Crystal Skull is literally just stupid fake bullshit made up by shysters, like, within this sort of last century. Oh, actually, th there's only three DLC missions, so pretty much we can do one of the missions today, and then next the time will two. be the last two. Yeah. I don't even remember what the second one is. Uh, I think the second one is when you find, you dogfight the two uh, a crazy ace people that are. Uh, uh, oh siblings. yeah, because you, you fight them in the fir in the first uh, mission as well. Yeah, so they they eventually run off. 
Stupid Hansel and Gretel. I think that's what they're called. I don't even remember if that's what they're called. They're a fun fight, though. Yeah, it's not terrible. Um, because like I said, all the, all three of the DLC missions are really fun. Um, I definitely am looking forward to a, a future Ace Combat game, which we know is in the works. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm uh, cautiously optimistic as well for it. As long as the gameplay is fun, I'll be happy. I mean, I would love the story to be still be, you know, Ace Combat uh, level batshit insane. But even if it's not, and it's just a fun plane game, I'll be happy. Hmm. Um, and I'm still thinking about playing one of the uh, PS2 Ace Combat games after this one. Probably zero. There's also part of me that wants to do four. <laughs> Where we can play as plain Jesus. Oh no, not Kit. I mean, we'd have to refer to him as Kara. No, he's actually a good, a good Jesus, because he gets cool music, and Kira is lame and looks Kira, like Kira gets cool music. And Kira looks like he has the face of an avocado. You don't know what what this guy's face it looks like. It's, it's whatever face. It's whatever I want it to be. I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, but everyone's face in seat looks like an avocado. So yes, because everyone has the same goddamn face. Maybe you have the same face. Did you ever think about that? How many times have you seen your own face? Really? Uh, anytime I go to a mirror and shave. Unless, like, unless like, they're not mirrors. Like, what if that? This morning I was shaving. What if all mirrors are actually windows? They're not. But they might be. But they're not. They could be. But they're not. But they might be. But they can't be when they're just mirrors. But what if, though? But they ain't. Unless. No. Uh, I mean, just... The Alicorn is a great, like, Metal Gear Solid-like weapon. It's so fucking stupid. I love it. No, yeah, you're right. It is just, like, a Metal Gear Solid weapon. I can't possibly think what it could be. Oh, wait. Um, but Arsenal Gear. It's better, Arsenal Gear. Because it's a Outer boat. Ha Outer Haven. Well, Outer Haven was Mount Rushmore. There was also a submarine. Was a submarine at one point? Yeah. Yeah, it was a submarine. Huh. I forgot. Because it, it has the adaptive camo, that's why it can make the Mount Snake more. Because that's not actually a feature. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. That one was it, a summary, yeah. It camouflages to look like it has Mount Snake more on it. Which, you know, it makes sense to me. I mean, why not? I guess if you got the technology, fuck it. <laughs> you have the technology, but I don't want to spend too mu that much. <laughs> God. Oh. I'm just right now. I'm just waiting for the cut. The, the cutscenes going on as they're explaining what the alicorn is and shit. And they're talking about the arsenal bird that we shot down before. So we just blow up the damn thing. We capture it. Don't make me repeat myself. Because because yeah, this is, it takes place between two of the arsenal bird shoot downs. I think it's like right before you do the uh I think storyline wise it takes place right before you do the um the raid on those uh that, that water base that's a really fun like sandbox map. That's good for racking up points and unlocking shit. Hmm, makes sense. Actually I'm surprised it would take place then because that's your first age as doing Trekker. Surely it would be like after that. Cause like that's the well that's the first stage where you are Strider One. Though, to be fair, in this DLC, you do have a guy who's still trying to kill you, so... I mean, that's just life. Well, I mean, like, a guy on your side. And then he gets arrested that's for doing life. that. That's just life. Yeah. Well, I mean, There are people on your side that are trying to kill you. Yeah, we call them the American military. Or the police. Yeah. Well, they're not on your side. They're, they're on their <laughs> own side. <laughs> yeah. They're on your side. When has a police officer ever actually helped you? Man. They're actually they're 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 actually not legally required to help you. Exactly. Not anymore. They're legally re they're legally required to enforce laws and arrest criminals. But only they, sometimes. They, they, 
they they do not have obligation to help you if you're in danger. They're also prior. They they're also like meant to prioritize prior, right, ah, prioritize their own safety. That's why they won't walk and they won't go into school shootings and shit. Uh, I thought that was just because they didn't want to. Two things can be true. Well, there were ones that Thing wanted is, to go when they were literally told not to. I don't. Want, I don't. I don't want to get too conspiratorial with that whole story. It's, it's like just. It's terrible. It's it's like something happened that's not supposed to be, and they're just covering it up. Like I'm half expecting it to be like the cops accidentally shot shot one of the kids or something, and that's why they're just like, oh no, we totally didn't go in. You know, I could believe that. And because they're and that's why they demolished the freaking school. I was like, like some. I was so, like, something went something went down that they're they, they must have screwed up really bad. On actually, they, be, they don't want you might be right. Like I could see that. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Cause it's weird that they then just tore down the school, and I mean they are a gang, the police. They won the gang war against the mafia. Yeah. <laughs> they had better government funding. I mean my cops up here are, are so bad they couldn't even catch two people on foot. So, you know. Oh yeah, that's what we could talk that's some good news. Uh Matt Cross is coming to the West. Woo! Oh, yes, it is. But one of the, there's three series getting dubbed and brought over, Ooh. or getting localized, I should say. Yes, uh, one of them is seven. Yeah, Which one of them is seven. Because, because the people never thought Macross Seven would get localized because it was so expensive they can't even re-release it in Japan. Is uh, Seven's the one with the, the green hair girl, right? That everyone was obsessed with yeah. at one point. No, that was that was. Wait, what? Well, every every show has a green-haired girl. The do one who's like the, yan the... yan 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 ni hao and yan. No, that's 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 Frontier. Oh, okay. Seven is the one that like the rock star guy. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But you know what else is getting brought over? Delta, everyone's favorite. <laughs> but you know what that actually does mean though? A lot of people in Japan will order the American version because that's what happened with Project Echo. Because the discotheque version of Project Echo is just better than the releases in Japan. So a lot of that's people in Japan pre-order. That's why Japan doesn't like reverse importing. Because Discotech does a really good job, and when the Project Echo one got made with like the original fucking uh, footage and shit, uh, the original negatives, they were just like a lot of people in Japan just fucking ordered the Western copy because it was just better. And then they got mad because they don't have to pay the overinflated. Uh price like japanese prices for these sort of things yeah what's funny is like so stuff like like um old like anime stuff usually does cost a bit more here but compared to what it costs in japan natively it's cheap which is insane Mm-hmm. crazy crazy isn't it strange isn't it oh no you um, may know everything i'm going to do you know that's one I, I would like to see re-released, the old Sonic OVA movie? You know what, it does actually occur to me, that we could actually see... I was thinking, with Takahashi's death, we could see, like, maybe not fully Season Zero getting a proper Western release, but, like, what if they do Yu-Gi-Oh! Brotherhood? You mean, like, a, a manga-accurate one? Yeah. Oh! Actually, hold on! That was something else I want to talk about! So I saw the, uh, did you see Vash's new design? Oh yeah, that looks where, oh, hey. he, He's Where he, they de-spiked his hair. Yeah. Now it, now it just looks like he's, now it's just, just, his hair's just, you know, fucking 20 years out of date. He, he looks like a, he looks like a rejected Guilty Gear design now. Poor Vash. And also the animation doesn't look super great. No. It looks like... But, oh, wow. but you want to know a good thing? We know some of the English casting, and they and uh, they cast Vic Mignogna as a sex pest. Oh, I'm not even kidding. They're just like a generic sex pest. And I was just like, oh my fucking god. I mean, at least right. they gave him something to do. Hey, they, yeah. hey, he doesn't, he doesn't even need. He, I mean, maybe all these years he was method acting for this role. Could be. <laughs> but um. But yeah, I um, I I, I that was the one thing that I, I almost forgot about was that. Um, so yeah, I, I, yeah. I my interest in it like, not not it dropped completely. Yeah, but as I said, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Brotherhood could be interesting. Cut out all the filler. Uh, just do it, 
you know. But Dungeon the people Dice who... Monsters. Murder the people who... Hey, that isn't filler. Oh, it isn't? No. It's important. Huh. Well, not important, but Duke Devlin is actually canon. Although I'm pretty sure the arc in the manga was a lot more murdery as you know, most of my uh my brain has been damaged by uh, a bridge series because I just keep hearing the song. <laughs> I was gonna say Duke Devlin, and I was just like that. <laughs> yeah, that 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 that. I can't not hear it. My brain is poisoned. Uh, yeah. To, to, be fair, to be fair, that's, prob that's probably more interest than uh, he's had in the show. Honestly, you're right. Hey, he got to have a brief cameo in Dark Side Dimensions. Yeah, and that was it. Yeah, that was it. It was because he didn't duel, so it's like you couldn't do anything with him in a show where everyone du solved all their problems with dueling. You could do more with him in a show where everyone solved their problems with violence. Yes. Like that time Kyber literally hired out a theme park, or built a theme park, and hired actual psychopath murderers to try and kill Yuki and his friends. I, lo I and, still love how, with that in mind, Kaiba was based off of just this one asshole in a tabletop game shop. Yep. The greatest character, perhaps the greatest anime character ever made, came from such humble beginnings. I like to imagine there's at least one guy in the world who knows exactly that it's him, and he's just like, I'm never gonna fucking tell anyone. Nah, I think anyone who would be the basis of Kaiba would, would never recognize that it was them. Ha! That can't be me! Because I'm too cool! Exactly. <coughs> but yeah, it would be interesting if they did do that. And I kind of almost suspect it, considering, well, you can't really do anything, like, sequely with anything involving uh, Takahashi's actual characters. Yeah. So a full, and I wouldn't a proper... really want them to. Oh, no, I don't think, I don't think anybody would. I think, like, Dark Side Dimensions was the best you could get out of it, considering it was a uh, ending for a story that had already ended. Yeah. But I do think that that could be one of the next like sort of my, like projects they might do is this kind of oh let's just do a uh, proper telling of this of the manga as it was. Be interesting at least because I did originally consider oh what if they just brought season zero over but I think they would just do it from the start because I think season zero has like a whole issue with like related to uh, who owns it. I don't know. It could definitely be fun. But, uh... Though, I feel like I, I feel like this is like one of those monkey's paw sort of things. Mm. Where, like... It's like, yeah, here you go, and then it's like the Vash one. Or it's like Trigun. Uh, you can't not have the Yugi hair. Think of how think of how many people have been inspired by that ridiculous hairstyle. I mean, you can't. I mean, they Vash can't not have that, but here we are. Like, I don't care about him being skinnier because he was skinnier in the manga, and like he wasn't even really that swole in the anime anyway. So I don't really give a shit. It's mostly the voice of the show that sells it. Yeah. Whereas, uh, deep voice, deep Dan Green voice. Oh. oh no! Where well, he sounds mysteriously a lot like Knuckles the Echidna. That is weird. How bizarre! I wonder how that happened. I do find it funny that the abridged, that the Dragon Ball abridged version of, um, you know, Vegeta fighting out Trunks as his uh, son is way less funny than the uh, original dub version. Where Vegeta just comes off as a humongous idiot. Yeah. Trunks? How bizarre! This wannabe Super Saiyan of the future has the same name as my son! It is really fucking funny. I actually did recently get the the, the series on Blu-ray, so I, I, I do want to at some point uh, finish my rewatch of that. With I, I'm on the uh, Boo Saga. Ah. <coughs> I would, I'd say I'm near the end, but the Boo Saga lasts 30 years. 
Are they still in the Boo Saga? But the Boo Saga is so there, fucking right? long. Oh yeah, there is like, like also rumors of Dragon Ball Super of Dragon Ball returning as an anime. Yeah, next year I think. Speaking of anime, speaking of returning as an anime, guess what is returning as an anime? Panty and stocking. Bleach. Oh, I've heard the one I said. I mean, they're just okay, going to adapt the final arc. Who gives a shit? I was just—I—I I, I thought it—I thought I thought it did so badly that like they did, they rushed the final arc closed and canceled oh. the anime. But apparently, they want to adapt the final arc for some reason. Uh, they it did, but I think now they're like, well, if we we're kind of at well, we need something to do, something to fill a time slot. Why don't we just? I think we, maybe it's been long enough that people will be nostalgic for Bleach and not. And think, I mean, that's oh. exactly what it is. People yeah. are now getting nostalgic for Bleach again. Like I've heard a lot of people excited for this. For a bad storyline being covered that also ended incredibly prematurely, because it's so like, all right, enough's enough, Kubo. You've got five chap. You you have five chapters. Go. I know we said one arc, but you're stretching it out like a little shit. Stop it. We said one arc like two years ago. <laughs> this ends now. You have five chapters. And so it was like, uh, 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 and then I guess they beat the final boss. So, God fucking, God fucking forbid. I feel sorry for people who are excited for this, because it's like, well, you're not going to get anything. Well, here they are. Yeah. Scream and rage. Scream. <laughs> oh. But hey. I think we can all learn something from today's today's events. I don't know what it is, but I'm sure there is something we can learn. Alright, where are these two assholes? I want to start shooting at them. Oh, there's Scream. Hello. <laughs> Man. Okay. They are on my ass. They just do one of my favorite little stunts. <laughs> All right, the Sonic Origin music controversy. I keep forgetting about that. Oh, yeah. You know, and then there'll be like a random video that says about Sonic Origins. It's like, oh, uh, are we past this, right? Are we past this, past this already? No. Mm. Never. Oh, but yeah, it's getting a bit too hot. Yeah. We should destroy, we should destroy the sun. Mr. Burns, right? <laughs> oh, by the way, sure they, they sure hit. Movie What's great is. Scream landed a hit and started gloating about it, and as soon as she did that, I finally found her, and I just fucking unloaded three missiles into her ass, and she's like, OH FUCK, I'M OUT! <laughs> like, imagine you hit someone, you're like, YEAH, I DID IT! And then you just turn around and unload three shots on you. It's like, oh, oh, you think you fucking- oh, you- I see you feeling yourself! That kind of pride! Pride come up before the fall. That kind of pride can't be good for your health. Come on, as you wish. Didn't have to go down like this. Up now, it's time to shoot uh, a bunch of trucks down. They flying trucks. No, unfortunately. Do they transform into anything? No. Well, they transformed into a pile of rubble. Does that count? Sure. Why not? Yeah, I'll allow it. I'll, I'll allow it. This time. Do they transform into technology-hating space hippies? <laughs> 
No, I don't think they did that. Rip these machines. <laughs> Oh, man, when are we going to finally get, when are we going to get more info about, like, uh, Witch of Mercury anyway? I want more. Me too. Probably when it comes to, actually, there's, there, there was a preview episode coming out sometime. Neat. I don't actually know when, sometime this summer, I think. Oh, damn it, he got shot down as soon as I fired the missiles. Damn it! You tried. I could have used those missiles for other people to shoot down. Make me waste missiles. No one makes me bleed my own blood. No way! Man, it will be a better place if we all just, uh, if we all could just enjoy dodgeball more. I mean, if you can dodge a wrench. Exactly. <clears throat> Joe could dodge a wrench, Boris Johnson. It's true. We, in fact, we should test that theory. What? A friend of mine did. A friend of mine did joke that me and him should go down to number ten because they will be that desperate to fill all of the positions that we probably get jobs. <laughs> you know, I don't even know why I bother shooting F, F down F thirty fives. Like seriously. Yeah, just like yeah, just let nature take its course, man. Like, I, like I don't even know if my missiles killed him or if he's the thing just randomly exploded. I, I actually did have someone online try to tell me, no, they fixed all the problems. The F thirty five. No, they didn't. <laughs> I mean, there's Taurus. Oh. Don't you see? Come on, keep no, going. I do, I do kind of wonder how many times I'm going to keep seeing, um, like, the shot of a Tem going back to the afterlife over the next coming weeks. Good question. I did, it's rather morbid, but I did see on Japanese Twitter, um, Monster Reborn was trending. I don't think that's going to work. Which is kind of a bit fucked. I mean, maybe if I mean, maybe if they hope enough it'll work. Besides, if he comes back as a zombie, he'll have zero defense. Ah, oh. man, he's up. He's up there launching his catapult, launching his dragon champions with his catapult turns at the flotation ring of the castles in the sky now. F. Rip in peace. Rip in peace, Takahashi. Oh, here comes the Alicorn. He died, he, he died as he lived. Well, something, something card games. Yeah. On aeroplanes. Maybe he was planning the next stage. Card games on boats. Actually, wait, no, they did that. We gotta do planes now. Wait, actually, did they do any? I don't think they did do boats. Uh, they have done plays before. They've done a, they've done a, on top of a blimp, which turned out to be secretly a jet. Because that was that was ba that was the reveal in Battle City. You thought it was a blimp, but it was actually a jet disguised as a blimp. I'm on Maze Kyber Corp. Makes any money. I'll fire the guy who made that can. Yeah. That is one of my favorite sort of like actual dub chain uh, line changes. And fire whoever made that, whoever made that cat. That is not up to Kyber Corp quality. Oh, I love Eric. Oh, Eric Stewart. Uh, well, just so good. I just blew up the nu blew up the new plane. We did it. Now we get to hear Taurus say the funny line. Come on, Taurus, say the line, Taurus. One hundred billion dollars. No, not yet. Here we go. Chris White sheets. <laughs> oh, I love this fucking nut job.
I like how they just say, they kill a million people. Plans to save 10 million lives. 10 million lives! <laughs> you know, that's gonna be uh, great for the, uh, just... the bit rate. When I just decided, when I said 10 billion lives, I just started, like, flicking my thumb all, all around the camera, uh, stick. And just spaz the camera out. That's gonna that's gonna be great in the fucking compression. <laughs> the operation has been oh, don't worry. I'm sure this episode will get uploaded eventually. Maybe the other ones are uploaded. I just gotta take, put them live. There's only two, there, there's two more I gotta put live. This one it might be uh, a little bit longer because I'm on vacation and it takes it takes a long time for my internet to do shit with uploading. Especially if you're on vacation. Well, because I will be home and I'll want to use the internet. Why don't you start the upload process while you go and take a shit? It takes hours. Have a shit? Yeah, I'm not surprised. No, no, the upload, you fucker. Oh, they just take a really long shit. Because my, my net is not very fast. So that's actually why I stopped doing 1080p, is because it just takes way too long. I would need them to put better internet in my area, but they don't. Why would they do that? Another question, Alex. Oh, he's act Captain he's yeah, talking to his Alexa again. Captain of the Alicorn. What is his goal? I don't know what it is. There's something about uh Torres's face that's also pretty funny to me. Cause he just looks unhinged. <laughs> he looks like some dude auditioning to be Joker. I mean, there is that fucking edit where they draw in the fucking uh, video where they make, put the Joker makeup on him. Yeah, hi, 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 Captain Torres. Making a collage of Torres. Mm -hmm. and I get to choose the coping mechanism. Keep my hypothesis in mind. Uh, Torres, best uh, best video game villain or best video game villain. Well, it's between him and Armstrong. It's true. At least they both are in separate franchises and they're, and they're both dead, so they can't join up. We would lose. I mean, the problem is, is I think no, they would just... Would you lose or would just nobody win? Well, I think I don't think they'd stay teamed up. I think they'd betray each other. Because you see... Armstrong is trying to use war as a profit-making business to end war as a profit-making business. While Taurus just wants to kill a million lives to say ten million lives. They're completely, they're completely separate ideologies. It's also how he thinks we'll end all wars. He thinks blowing up this one area will end all wars. Well. Actually, yeah, that's the thing. And uh, and uh, Armstrong d wants there to continue being wars, but they're not wars of profit making business. He just wants everyone to be free to fight their own wars. So that's where they th that's where they would start fighting. No, I'm trying to end war. I want them to fight their own wars, and then they and then they try nuking each other. Be no nano machine, son. It's true. You had to use a bullshit blade from a guy who failed to beat him before to kill him. Anyway. No, it's not about the blade, it's about the symbolism. Because you see, Raiden couldn't beat him with his original sword because his sword was a tool of justice. And justice means you can't just gank a bitch. And that but it's one... not his sword. <laughs> that so line... you can gank a bitch. That line is so good. Anyway, that that that's it for this Ace Combat recording. Come back next time for the final Ace Combat recording. At least just remember, seven. if you're going to kill someone, don't use your own sword. Use someone else's sword. Yeah, come on, do it, pussy. Have a good day.